Hello, welcome, welcome. Come on in, guys. Come on in. Hope you're doing well today. Today is going to be a very, very fun live stream because we're going to be making breakable crates. We're going to be making moving platforms. And maybe if we have some time, we can jump inside of the enemies and make them a little bit more fun to hit with our axe. Before we jump in, guys, I want to let you know that today is the last day uh, for a bit <coughs> where there's a 50% off coupon. There's five coupons, 50% off for my massive program, full-time game dev. So here are just a few reviews. Uh, people love the program. And by the way, if you're a member or a student, you're supporting the channel and you're supporting development of father. It really means a lot to me. And let me know in the chat and also let me know in the comments below. If you're a student, what you think about the program? I'd love to know. Also, just remember that it's a 30 plus hour program. Okay. This is a bigger premium course. It's gonna teach you everything I've learned in the last decade, really it's 15 years of making indie games. 2D and 3D art tutorials, how to secure funding, six figures of funding from publishers with just a demo, how to secure funding from Kickstarter, uh, right here. Um, Unity, C Sharp, how to market yourself, hit the Steam front page. So just check out that link below, guys. Now obviously this supports the studio, right? This allows us to keep making games. Game sales allow us to keep making games, but also the course sales is really what's gonna allow us to make a bigger game like Father. So be sure to check out the link below, but the most important thing is it's a, it supports your future, right? And I can say that confidently because I just get great reviews from 3,000 students worldwide. I have a lot of students. I'm very lucky that this course has done so well, but I hope that my students feel lucky that they're part of the program as well. All right, guys, let's jump inside of Unity and get started. <laughs> By the way, guys, feel free to download my free 2D game kit below. It's totally free, it's my treat to you. I used this exact 2D game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days, and then I got to play it in front of his subscribers, which was really awesome. Um, so download that, use it however you want. It's my treat to you, yeah. Okay. All right, guys, so we're finishing up what I'm calling, I don't know, a feature or a showcase level. We're showcasing features of this game. There's two reasons why we're doing this. Um, we want to get a really good idea of the gameplay mechanics for this game. We made a demo, right? And I'm kind of going back and starting over a lot of things here. Um, that's what we've been talking about during our live streams. So really I wanted to make a feature level. And this level is just showcasing all of the gameplay elements that we have currently and fine tuning them in the context of this beautiful mansion, okay? That's the goal of this feature level. So I'm gonna hit play for you guys and we can just take a look at everything we've got. Let's make sure we disable everything. We don't need the library area. Actually, let's turn on the library and the arena really quick. And we're gonna do some occlusion culling. So let's bake the occlusion culling. And let's also bake the nav mesh before we hit play. The occlusion culling is going to make it a lot faster, right? It's gonna cull out all of the stuff that we don't need to see in the camera viewport. The, na the navigation baking is going to allow the enemies to actually run around on the nav mesh, which is super duper important. And that's when you have enemies that use the AI agent, okay? So that looks good. Let's go ahead and disable the arena and the library so that those load when we get to those areas. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit play here. And hopefully this isn't gonna be too loud for you guys. Let me hit play. There we go, good, good, good. Awesome, okay, so let's show you what we've got. I'm gonna to go to maximize play here. All right, so the frame rate's fine. Um, we're gonna be talking about Pro Builder uh, maybe next week or the week after when I do some more live streaming because Pro Builder might be a solution for our, our frame rate issues. Um, okay, so let's see here. Let me double check the chat, make sure everybody's okay. Good, good, good. Welcome, Smurry, Vexus, SDev, Daily Dose, Jack, Tippy, Skinny Bandit, Alex. Welcome, guys. Come on in, come on in. How's everybody day? How's everybody's day going? All right, so <clears throat> this just says, welcome to the showcase level here. We'll explore all the various elements of gameplay. First, press E to open doors. So this allows us to send this to potential investors or publishers, or it's really just for me, honestly, and my team to get an idea of what the game has to offer, okay? 
You could simply crouch or sprint, shift to slide. Okay, cool. All right. Flashlight. Okay, good. So I did all this this morning, uh, the, the text and all that. It's just 3D text. Um, we also have pick upable objects, right? And <clears throat> we have breakable objects. So these work. That's great. And I'm going to do the box today during the live stream. So that broke. That's great. Let's open that up. Take a look here. Okay, our enemies are disabled currently, <coughs> but we also have breakable benches. Come on. There we go. It doesn't feel good to hit things. I don't know why yet, so we're going to figure that out. Um, but overall, things are really looking good. By the way, the music is from Castlevania 64. I always go back and forth in, in what I want this feeling to be for the, for the game. And I think for exploring the castle, I definitely want it to feel like Castlevania 64. Okay, so we have all these features here. We even have a mid-air dash area. Right? Weapons you can collect. Right? Ammo, keys, levers. So we have everything in this demo area. Now, what we want to do is just utilize our current script for breakable objects. I'm going to show you how it works when we go to our box. Okay, so we have a big old box here. This is a prefab. I'm going to turn off the lighting. All right. <clears throat> Perhaps you need to implement some texture changes in order to make it feel like hitting the item progresses the damage. Maybe I think I think that's true. I may actually do um, a a freeze frame effect, just a very subtle freeze frame effect, like your axe is getting stuck. Um, I also think that um, there's it's something with the sound. It's it needs to be a thwack, and we're not getting a thwack. So anyway, let's go into this crate here. Now, as you can see, all it has is a box collider on it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy the component. Uh, from the breakable object here. The, these are not going to be pushable, so we're not going to add the pushable object script. We're just going to add the breakable object script. There we go. And also we want to create these big old, uh, let's go to these guys over here actually. Inside each object, it's not going to instantiate broken boards, it's just going to enable broken boards that are already there. And these are all a prefab, right? <clears throat> so they're all the same prefab. Now there are, I'm going to just scale up the boards. So I'm just going to make them really big. Um, I think that's, it's fine. It's not the greatest thing ever, but we're just trying to get this demo area done. So I'm just going to make these big old boards here. And I think they're just going to all be the same size. Okay. So let's just get one sized right and then copy that transform value. Um, so let's just make them really big. So that actually looks pretty good. Let's go to, there we go, yeah, yeah. Uh, if we go to isometric mode, and by the way, if those of you just joining us, just remember that today is the last day. It is the last day that we're doing these live stream coupons, at least for a while. Um, I'm not sure when I'll be doing these again, but uh, if you're interested in joining the program, these sell out usually every time we do a live stream, they typically sell out. So if you wanna get one of the five seats available to get 50% off the program, which has 3,000 students, a private Discord server, great reviews. And by the way, if you're a student, feel free to say hello in the chat. I love seeing you guys in the chat. Um, and just let me know about what you think about the program. But check it out below. It supports the channel. And as always, guys, I really appreciate you letting me do sponsored ad reads. In this case, sponsored by myself, full-time game dev. It really means a lot and it supports the development of Father. It really does. It pays my salary and also pays Felipe's. Um, that among other things like game sales. Okay, so we've got that one size here. That looks great. So I'm gonna actually copy this transform value. I'm gonna copy the component and I'm just gonna paste them on every single one here. Paste component values, okay. Now you see that they moved the position, which is totally fine. So I'm actually gonna create some sort of box shape here. Uh, something like this, something like this, something like, let's see here, that one. That one, that one, okay, good. One here. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's just gonna sort of fall apart, okay? One over here and then maybe one here, good. 
And we're just gonna rotate some of them. That's about it. Now we don't want these pieces to be too big to where they allow you to um, create like bridges and stuff because I don't really wanna break the gameplay. Um, I want a lot of controls when it comes to the gameplay. Let's go to shaded, or let's go to wireframe mode and remove this mesh renderer and see what it looks like. Yeah, it's fine. We have two of them in the inside here. Actually, it's just one. So we could actually probably, let's see here. I'm just gonna put it in the middle and then we're gonna copy this and we're gonna go to the left and pull it over. <clears throat> right here to the right and then down. I feel like there's just too many. I feel like, I feel like we really don't want this. Hmm. But let's, let's just see, let's see how it feels. Okay. We'll put some here and then some here. There we go. And then we'll just create some, these two here and rotate them um, globally. Boop. Okay. So there's all of our boards. I'm going to group these. We press control shift G and it groups them in and we're going to just do boards. Okay. Now these are all prefabs, right? So hopefully that'll help with any memory issues. We're going to activate an object on death, drag that in. Good. We're going to remove the box collider on death. We're also gonna move, remove the mesh renderer on death. Okay, then we're also gonna have a death sound, which is box break. And overall, I think that that's all we wanna do. Okay, so you, let's see here, let's go to shaded mode. Okay, let's bring our character controller right in front of here and zero him out. All right, press control shift F, that's gonna move him to the camera viewport, but we wanna make sure that we set his rotation to zero and we don't want the rotation to match the, the uh, camera. What the hell? Hold on, let's see here. Why didn't that work? Ah, we were moving the box, okay, sorry. Um, go to the controller here, zero him out, zero, zero, oops. Zero out the rotation, yes, and then go to play. There we go, okay, where's our box? I don't know why that happened. Where's the box? There he is. All right, you guys wanna test this out? Right, so way too many pieces. I say we cut it in half, okay? We need to cut that in half. That's ridiculous, <laughs> that's ridiculous. Yeah. And you know, I don't know why it was moving. You know, it, it doesn't need to be able to be moved. Um, <clears throat> so th these big boxes here, they, they really shouldn't be moving. Um, so I would say we're gonna make it kinematic and don't use gravity. Hopefully that'll fix that. Okay, let's just remove some of the boards here so that we only have a set of three, okay? And just turn those on and let's take a look at what they look like. So that's the problem right there, right? So I would say, let's just move some over to here, to here. Yeah, there we go. And then these over here. Maybe move those up. What are these? Yeah, yeah. So I think that'll do, guys. We'll just move them over to each side. So we just have sort of this random look and feel. Maybe this one goes up like that. I think that's good enough. Let's hit play. Take a look. <coughs> Fun. Fun. Man, I don't even know if these should be breakable because that's ridiculous. You know? Sounds like a great way to get stuck. Um, those, I just feel like those shouldn't be breakable. That's, I think we're going to commit to these not being breakable, but that's how it's done. <laughs> that's how you make breakable boards or breakable boxes. Um, I'm going to not, we're, we're not going to do breakable for the big ones. The big ones are more platforms than anything, although, dang it. It would be nice. Hmm.
we're not going to do it for now. Okay. I'm just going to disable it. We're, uh, yeah, we're not going to do it. We're not going to do it. I just feel like we shouldn't do it. So we're not going to do it. Okay. Um, but, but that's how it's done, right? Um, these, you can't really break those either. <coughs> you can break these. What about these small crates? Definitely want to be able to break these small crates. Okay. Same thought process here. What we're going to do is take the, and, and basically the way it works guys is you, we have a ray cast coming from the ax. It checks if it hits a breakable object. If it does, then it fires. Um, the breakable object script. Let's go ahead and paste in, yeah, let's just do a new breakable object script. It will detect if we're hitting the box, and if the box has a breakable script on it, then it fires all of these effects here, okay? I would say this crate is, has a health of 30. That means it's gonna take three hits, right? Um, I would say the boards here, let's just uh, enable the boards really quick. This one down here. We're just going to move here, just positioning them so it looks like it falls apart. That's about it, okay? Um, that's good. That's good. And then finally, just drag in those boards to our activate objects on death. We also want to disable the box collider on death and disable the mesh renderer so we can specify all these unique things that happen when it dies. Death sounds, box break, right? And then we don't want any damage to occur when you throw it. This isn't really something I enjoy anymore with this game. It, it makes it really diff difficult to control uh, the gameplay. So I'm going to set the damage velocity multiplier to zero. That means that if I throw it against the wall, no matter how many times I throw it against the wall, it's not going to break. Um, you really have to hit it with your uh, ax. That's about it, guys. Um, that crate is now, well, the theory is, the crate is now breakable. So let's hit play and take a look. Good. <coughs> awesome. Yeah, that's the reason I like the smaller sort of particles is because, or these these elements here is because it, they don't really interfere with the gameplay. It's going to be really hard for me to take these and stack something up and like climb up and get into a hole or something. Whereas with this guy, if we break him, man, you might you might be able to take those particles. And uh, I think what I need, I figured it out. This is what uh, Half Life does. What Half-Life does is it breaks into small, like, chunky triangular panels. Um, so they have, like, a big triangle, and it goes up like that, and they sort of just fall in on each other. I think that's what I might do. Those look a little bit too thick, and each, each object is different, right? Um, so what I'm going to do is, I know for the chairs and the table, or, or the benches, I want them really thick and chunky, right? But these are more panels, right? So I'm going to go to local scaling mode and then I feel like mm, global local yeah okay we'll just do it each one individually so the Y eh, something like that there we go just thin them up and then we'll be done with these and we'll move on to those movable platforms okay once we get these movable platforms feeling great, um, and once we make the enemies feel great, then we'll really have a good demo of all of our features in the game, right? It's not actually a level, it's just a feature, uh, a feature level, really. Just showcases our features, that's about it. Okay, guys, um, that should do it. Let's hit, pl oh, gotta make sure those are disabled. Don't wanna forget about that. Disable the boards and then hit play. I don't like how I can hear it twice. It's like a double thwack sound. I think it's the, uh, I don't want a sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I don't want to sound when the object hits the ground. So minimum velocity for sound should be like 15. Thank you. Okay, good. The same is true. Good. The wood planks is doing the same thing. Awesome. Okay. That I was worried what that was. Basically we were getting like a, a little tapping sound like more than once when you hit it. And I didn't like that. There we go. I heard it there. But also I think what we want to do is just go to all of our objects here and we're going to set the rigid body mass to like, well, let's see here. Do we have an impact value that hits the object and pushes it? Let's see here. Hit multiplier or something. Cause I don't, I don't really feel like these, what do you guys think? Should the mass be bigger than one? Should the rigid body mass be bigger than one? What are your thoughts? Yes, at full-time game dev, we do teach you how to pitch your game to publishers. That's a big part of it. It should be bigger than one. Okay. So the table, that doesn't move. The chairs, I feel like those should be something like two. Um, the benches should be something like three. The boxes here, I'm thinking two. I just don't like how they're moving so much, right? <clears throat> These little fellas, they should break, but they're steel. So I don't know if, what do you think guys, should these break? These these uh, bins, <coughs> bins here, should they be breakable? And these we can do 1.5. Should the baskets be breakable? We have a yes and we have a no. No, okay, well, I figured. I totally agree, we should not. All right, just remember guys that we're making a feature demo. That's what we're making here. We're not making an actual level. Um, but I'm gonna make sure that this looks pretty here. I'm going to throw in a painting really quick. Uh, um, where is it? Nope. There it is. Hey, that looks great. Remember that, guys? We did that last week. All right. Um, so we have our breakables. These, I feel like these should be movable, but not breakable. Um, so I'm going to make these wooden barrels. Unless you know, Felipe decides to, I feel like if it, if these are gonna be breakable, they need to look more breakable, AKA a wood ring instead of a steel ring. Um, but for now, I, I feel like we should just do a pushable, just put a pushable object script on there and make it like four. It's a heavy barrel with like a bunch of wine in it or something. It's pushable, yes. Minimum sound for velocity, minimum velocity for a sound should be something like 10. Um, and finally, that's it. That's it. So let's let's test out all the all of the the weights here for the mass. Thwack, thwack. Still a little much. I don't like it. I feel like we need to, on the ax, that's good. That feels great. That's a, that, that's a bit much, man. I feel like we need to go to our ax and take a look at the values for hitting objects. Let's see here. Forward force. That's a lot, 100. That's a lot. Let's see if what if we move it down to like 20, what happens, okay? All right. That's much better. 
I feel like we should do that for the pistol. The pistol should be 20, right? Um, forward force. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 20. Shotgun is fine. Rifle is fine. Uh, the automatic, no. It should be smaller. So something like 20. And that's about it, guys. Um, the, the problem with... I cannot figure out why it doesn't feel good to thwack things. And I think it, it's got to be the sound. But let's, let's, let's not start with the sound. Let's start with the... Um, Let's let's start with the uh, seeing if we can do some kind of temporary freeze where it freeze frames for like half a second. Okay, um, I think I already have a script built in in Unity. And by the way, those of you just joining us, just remember there are probably three codes left for full time game dev. Today is the last day that we're doing these live stream um, coupon codes. Okay, we'll uh, revisit it another week, but. For this week and next week, for sure, this is it, right? So we've got three coupon codes left. Um, so be sure to check out below if you want 50% off to join the program. Join 3,000 students. <coughs> okay, uh, we also go, let's go to our controller here. Our character controller has a script in there, okay? And that script is called freeze frame effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Okay, so we can determine the wait time. So let's first and foremost go to our damageable entity script and take a look at what happens when you hit it. Uh, right here, take damage. Do I do a freeze frame effect? Freeze, there it is. I do a freeze frame effect. <coughs> Man, <clears throat> this virus just won't go away. Uh, we're gonna do a, a second. The reason we're gonna do a second is because we wanna make sure that it's working at all, right? So it's gonna freeze the game for a full second. If it's working, then we can just make it like 0.2 or something and just fine tune it, because right now it's just not enough. There we go. Good. I feel like it should be slower. Yeah, I feel like it should be much slower. So I would argue that the freeze frame effect should have a default value. So if we go to the player controller, it should have a default value of float freeze scale or time scale. It's gonna be 0.2, right? But I'm gonna set it to something like 0.01 for the damageable entities. So 0.01, and when you set, guys, when you set this, most of you know this, but when you set a parameter value <coughs> inside the parameter field, this is its default, so most times we don't even have to, all the time we don't have to specify a time scale, but we can, okay, um, if we want to. So it's gonna be 0.2F by default, 0.2 float, uh, right? So let's make sure that we can get some sort of much more freezy effect. So 0.01, right? We're gonna freeze for, how about 0.3 seconds? So that's, that's a pretty aggressive freeze, but let's try it out. No, I, I, Zelen, Zelenteco, you might be right, but I actually think the, uh, the opposite is true. When you're working with something like an ax or a crowbar in Half-Life, it's fast, right? That's like game feel. Like you want, you want things to immediately happen. That's hilarious, it didn't even go. Whoa. What? It's also a sound issue, that sound sucks. Um, yeah, I mean, going to 0.01 is kind of nuts. So let's do, can we do 0.1? And then this would be 0.1. It's, it's, it's funny because each value actually influences each other, right? So if we freeze the game by a very small, if we make the frame rate really low, <clears throat> that wait time is gonna be really low. Um, as It's gonna get lower. So you kinda have to balance it out. Okay, so 
uh, a smaller freeze and also a a smaller freeze and a faster time. Okay, so let's go faster time, so 0 0.01, and then a smaller freeze. No, 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 no. A smaller freeze value. Yeah, yeah. So 0 0.05, and then this one's going to be faster, 0 0.05. Let's try that. Maybe if they're one-to-one, -one, it, it, it's good. I don't know. Wait for seconds real time. Okay, I didn't know that existed. Let's take a look. That's going to be super duper helpful. Um, define Dottie. So wait for seconds real time. Does that exist? It doesn't. What? Oh uh, yeah. Lowercase. Lowercase t. Great. Thank you so much. That's very, very helpful. Awesome. That makes things so much easier. Uh, can we give a round of applause to, was it Dottie? Yeah, Dottie. Um, that's awesome. Thank you so much. Now, some of you might be asking, Thomas, why are we using values written in the script and not variables that you can tweak at real time? I think any damageable entity, whether it's a box or um, an enemy should do the same freeze of frame effect. That's that's my theory. Okay, so the uh, wait time is gonna be something like 0.1 and it's gonna go down to 0.05. So very small, let's try this out. And this is gonna be different because we're using real time wait time. So the wait time is not being influenced by the frame rate anymore. Kind of feels pretty good. Um, let's see. Obviously, uh, oh, the chair, the chair, hold on. The chair made a stupid sound. Hold on one sec. Uh, and the same is true with these guys. Give me just a sec, guys. There's something I forgot to do. Um, the chair needs to be <coughs> pushable. Minimum velocity needs to be 10. Sorry, I just needed to do that really quick, okay? Um, obviously, you know, we should probably even go lower in the in the time scale, 0.01, but 0.03 for the wait time. So we're basically doing a much shorter wait time, but a very low frame rate. It's almost like freezing the game for a split second. That feels pretty good. Let's let's try let's try and get like a a little bit more in the wait time arena. So 0 0.06. It's like the it's got to be super subtle, um, and it's gonna happen whether you shoot a pistol, uh, whether you shoot a box. It just gives you that oomph. I hate the screen shake. The screen shake looks like crap. I wonder why. Um, that's fine. I think we could probably get away with a little bit longer. Maybe maybe not as much of a time scale. So 0 0.03 and then this would be 0 0.08. Let's try that. Pause the time scale of the actual uh, weapon. That's an interesting idea. Yeah, I don't like it. I think that's fine the way it was. Um, Pausing the axe. That's an interesting thought. Pausing the axe. That's an interesting idea. Hmm. I 
I don't know how I would do that. So I'm not going to worry about that right now. I think what we could definitely do though, let's, let's, let's activate our enemies really quick. Let's see how the enemies feel. Because it could be that it's just, it's a sound issue, right? Why aren't you following me? Is there no naf mesh? Also, the blood, I just, I feel like that's ridiculous. So let's go to blood. Um, blood spatter, enemy. There it is, hit particles blood. We don't need this blood decal projector, that's ridiculous. Okay, let's try this again. Oh, I just, I, I feel like there's something missing and I don't know what it is. Um, let's let's get that nav, me nav mesh working. For some reason, there's no nav mesh. Um, wait, yes, there is. Oh, we got to clear it because Unity sucks. Oh, my word. Okay, I'm going to have to close Unity. Something gets screwed up with the nav mesh. I don't know why, but we'll close Unity. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what the feeling, what, what feeling we're going for, but it just doesn't feel thwacky, and I don't know why. Camera shake on hit. Mm. Is it the sound? Do you think it's the sound? Who, let's vote for the sound. The sound is the issue. Let's start with just our enemies, okay? Let's bake our nav mesh really quick. Is it the sound? You know what's funny is the game we're looking at for just like, like general mechanics is like games like Dusk or Doom. The game feel isn't very good. Uh, I, I, I'm i probably gonna bite my tongue there. Cause I think a lot of you probably disagree, but the game feel isn't great. Maybe it's cause there's no blood on the ax. Look at that booty. Yeah, I don't know, man. So it's the sound. Do we feel like it's the sound? So let's first find what sound is being played when you whack something. The gun, let, let's, let me just show you. The gun feels good, okay? So if I go to the pistol here, Yeah, we're getting a little distracted, aren't we, guys? Because um, I should be doing the platforms, but I'd like to know why the axe feels this way. So this feels great. I love that. <clears throat> I feel like there needs to be a slice sound for the axe. The ax only should play a slice sound, right? So if we go to our knife, it's called a knife even though it's an ax. Um, there's a, what about the swing sound? Is it also the swing sound? I think it might be the swing sound. Hmm, let's hear. I think it's maybe too low. So let's go, let's head on over to artless.io 
And let's start, let's just start with the swing sound, okay? I'm gonna write down a, a series of notes. This is called game feel, by the way, what we're talking about, it's game feel. One, the swing sound should be sharper and faster. Uh, or more immediate, right? That's the first thing. Um, <clears throat> the swing sound should be sharper and more immediate. The hit sound for axes should in particular uh, should have a unique slice sound for anything, right? Um, slice sound for enemies, whoosh, but also slice sound for boxes, whoosh, right? In combination with the hit, right? So if the axe hits an enemy, it should play an animation, huh? Really? So it's like it like goes bounces back or something, or it slows down. Uh, and then the hit axe, the hit box sound for any breakable wooden object sucks. Okay, so let's find out what we can do here with axe swing. Do we have anything? That's not bad for a hit sound. Hmm. I'm curious if we can use that for, let's combine it with an ax or a swing like a, Let's get the uh, hit sound first, okay? Sword swing. Sword sing. <clears throat> Sword swing. Ooh. Let's, let's just get a couple sounds for hitting. Oh man, there's so many sounds that we're missing. We're gonna start with the swing sound. Otherwise, I'm gonna go crazy. That one feels pretty good. So let's download that and try and combine it with our current ax swing sound, okay? So if we go to our knife, we can, actually, we gotta to go to our sound manager. I gotta redo this. This isn't the best approach here. Uh, here are our ax swing sounds. Oh yeah, man, that's why. Watch this. Look at this. This is crazy. And this is nobody's fault. This is just something I didn't catch. Let's open up the first swing sound. Look at this. It's delayed. Look. And it needs to be faster. Change speed. We could probably just change speed with the pitch. A little too fast. 15. Yeah, I'll turn it up for you guys. Okay, so that's good. But I'm saying we need to do this. Okay, we're increasing the speed of it. Let's also go to those downloads and we have, remember we have that sword swing sound? And then we need a whoosh sound. Now this is a little too high pitched. So we can do like a lower one. Oh, that feels great. It's got to be the perfect sound, guys. And I feel like there needs to be like a whoosh.
whoosh swing. A big one. That one's it. That one's it. That feels really good. I feel like that needs to be longer. Um, right here. Okay. So that's that. Let's solo this out. Weak. Full. Oh yeah. So what we're gonna do is drop down the output. Um, oops. Sorry, I'm, I screwed up the playback speed. Here, there we go. Nope, that's not gonna do it. We're gonna do it individually. So let's uh, go here, drop you down, drop you down, and drop you down. Remember, we're going to negative 12 to negative six. So I feel like we need a little bit more of that bassy whoosh. Ooh, that one's great. A little too much though. Nope. I feel like we need a whoosh. I'm gonna make a really low whoosh. Oof. Yeah. But it needs to be thunk, thwacky. Nope. Nope. Oh man, there's something off. In fact, it just needs to be lower. We can speed it up though. Increase the tempo. Try that. Nope. We could try that one. We're gonna export this as Axe Swing 1 R2. Okay. Revision 2. Where are my sounds, huh? Weapons, Axe. Axe Wing 1 R2. Okay. Let's go to our Axe Wing 2. Okay, let's hear the difference. There's that one, and then there's this one. Guys, yes. <coughs> I feel like we could just change the pitches. So let's track, mix, render. Drop the pitch down just a tad. I feel like we need to remove this tail here. That's ridiculous. I'll, I'll do it for axe wing. 1R2 in just a sec. Axe wing 2R2. Uh, let's go back in time. Give it a little bit more speed at the front. Nope. Good. That's a little too loud, isn't it? Dang it. Okay. Kind of got to start over here. There we go. Fade out. Export. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, guys. Drop the pitch by eight. Ugh. It's a little too much. Boy, now it feels tinny. Ugh, Thomas. But whatever, let's just do, let's lower the pitch down and just try it out and see how it feels in game. You just don't know until you do it in game. It's so important, the sound. That's two. 
and then we'll do one a little lower than that maybe negative 10 and this will be 3r2 so one of you is asking shouldn't there be a hit sound that follows well yeah if you hit something so there's going to be a second sound uh, or set of sounds that we're going to be doing okay so we have our axe swing sounds we're only going to need three uh axe swing one r2 two r2 and then three r2 this is kind of redundant but we need to go to the knife now and choose those sounds which is I feel like this isn't gonna be right. It's missing something. Uh, element three doesn't have anything. We can delete this. Okay, and then the, the sound of the swing itself is a little low. So what we do is we go to the, uh, axe swing we got you can see that there's a screen shake that's screen shake let's go screen shake sh ha, what am i saying let's go to stream screen shake shotgun i want a little bit bigger shake and there's also a volume um <clears throat> can we choose a volume for the shoot sound surely gracious can we not oh so annoying this is my fault. Ugh. Maybe it's in the weapon. Shoot sounds, there it is. Okay. So it's playing a clip from the source. This is not my favorite approach here. Ugh. We're gonna do it a different way. We're gonna do play one shot and then we're gonna choose a volume because this whole playing from source thing, just you don't have a lot of controls. So uh, sounds, shoot sounds, there we go. We're gonna do it like this. Son of a, I really need to change the sound system in this game. It's just really not great. Um, shoot sounds, random sounds, sound, 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 good, 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 random sound. Why? Oh my word. We can't use that with this new, this current system. So I need to just go into this after the live stream and just, well, now it sounds worse guys. And that screen shake sucks. Okay. I mean, we could fix it pretty fast. So we're gonna go back in time and just make it louder. Export as wave. You know what, man? I just need to fix that sound system. It's kind of frustrating. That's okay. Um, negative five. Good. This will be R2. I'm just increasing the volume just a little bit so it's louder. Clearly, this isn't the best approach. This is a Band-Aid approach because, honestly, we need a new sound system that we're using for weapons. That feels good. But <coughs> the problem is there's so much reverb, you know? Um... So it just it doesn't sound up close so that's that's a problem too now i gotta go in and fix that so let's go to our sound manager 
No, we're good. We're good. Okay. Uh, and then also that that screen shake was ridiculous. Um, so let's go to uh, knife. Axe swing. And this is going to be screen shake. Yeah. Now, there's also the idea of doing particles. Um, but let's make sure this feels good. Ugh, doesn't feel good. Feels worse. Hmm. I feel like it's just, it's a... Ugh. I feel like I, maybe it's the uh, the speed of the swing, you know? There's just something iffy about it. Trail renderer. We're also going to do minimum vertex distance. We could do 0 0.02, right? No. Why is it doing that like jagged look? I don't know. There's a lot of things I'm confused about today. That's okay. Let's take a look at the uh, the SFX manager. There is a reverb setting on it that's just way too high. Um, reverb zone mix. Mm. No. Man, I don't know, guys. Hey, where are you going? <laughs> oh no. All right. Let's go ahead and move forward with the platforms, guys. And just remember, those of you just joining us, you can join full time game dev. There might be one or two coupon codes left after this. Um, I'm not going to be doing these live stream coupon codes for uh, maybe a couple weeks, three weeks. I'm not so sure. But uh, if you're interested in joining the program, 50% off, click the link below. If you're a student, by the way, feel free to say hello in the chat. Guys, uh, supporting the channel, one of the best ways to do it is to join the program. But also, it does support your future because it is a great program. It's a massive premium program. It teaches you everything I've learned in the last decade of making indie games. How you can start your own studio. Um... Okay, let's let's just go ahead and do these moving platforms. Um, something's wrong with them, and I'm not really sure what it is. So let's take a look at these. Mm. Where are you? We have a lot of things named platform. There it is. All right, so we're going to move you to about right here, and we're going to move his... Uh, what's this called? Position two, it's going to take us all the way to the top there. And maybe give us a bag of coins or something. I don't know. Um, the problem is, for some reason, the, the platform itself, uh, it doesn't... It doesn't collect the player. So let me show you. Actually, the best way to show you is to move it over like this actually. So really, if I hit play here, that moving platform, it moves, but it doesn't collect the player for some reason. So let's let's uh, remove the enemies. Yeah guys, there's only so much I can do during a live stream when it comes to game feel. Game feel is one of those super 
it's like it's one of those things where it's like it works and you don't know why and sometimes it doesn't work and you don't know why and you just have to play with it um that's what she said um okay so let's let's exit uh maximize play focus and figure out what the heck's going on if we could see maybe there's a uh Nope. Okay. There's nothing. <sighs> Let's see here. Ooh, I think it's because we need a trigger inside of this. So we're going to move it inside of this. Yeah. 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 Copy component, remove component. Basically what happens is this is kind of a janky way of doing things, but I'm going to put a trigger inside of this and that trigger, uh, you can take a look at the script here. The trigger is going to collect the player, right? Um, let's see here. Yeah, on trigger enter if other dot game object equals game manager player controller game object, um, then basically collect the player. So what we have to do is this is so stupid, but basically <coughs> collision detection really sucks when it comes to character controllers. Um, I'm not sure why it has to be so sucky, but it does. There we go. I could even, I believe we could snap. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Okay, it's nice and snapped in place. So if I step on this, on top of this, it's going to collect the player. But if my head hits the bottom, it will not collect the player. So let's hit play and take a look. There we go, good. And I can move, I can jump. Problem is, is, is it doesn't collect the player immediately. Let's see. So you might slip off. I don't know why. <clears throat> but I have a theory, you know. The theory is we just want to showcase this once. That's about it, right? So what I'm going to do is we just want to showcase this, uh, this feature. So I'm actually going to put it over here. And it's going to take us, so I can double jump up to it, and then it's going to take us to a big old bag of gold. How's that, right? So we can double double jump to it from here. Ah, uh, candles in the way. We'll just move them to the corner. Again, we're just creating a level that showcases all of our various features. So this could actually do something like that. That'd be kind of fun to jump to, right? And then it's going to take us all the way to here, to a bag of gold. <clears throat> Maybe smack dab over this. So this one's at 0.024, so this one's going to be there too as well. Yep, yep, yep. And then all we do is just move it over to the center and let's do a big old chest. Pick up chest gold. Right there. And let's hit play. Where are you? There he is. Definitely should probably scatter some lights around, but the, we have a flashlight, so. I think what I'm gonna do is have it come right up to this ledge here and you just walk on it. Yeah, let's do that, guys. So this is why I love like modular design. We can just take this, delete them, and then we can bring you down here and actually just grab a, vert a vertice here and just snap it right in place. There we go. Nice and centered. And then bring him. This is the, uh, the go-to location. It's just a reference, right? Go right here. And then you can do a double jump to collect it. That's pretty cool, right? Let's take a look.
I love having platforms. Something something about platforms going right up to an edge of something is super <coughs> satisfying, and it didn't. What the heck? <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Why didn't you? Um, let's take a look. What? Oh, that's so annoying. Why didn't you? That's so funny that I said that and then it screwed up. Let's hit play and take a look. Why are you not going up to the edge? Oh, that's so annoying. What? Oh, that's so gross. Hmm. It's because his pivot's wrong. His pivot is wrong. That's why. So we need to copy this mesh renderer here, uh, platform, and we need to put it inside of this one. Yep, that was the problem. Uh, and then we set it to one to one to one. There we go, Thomas. All right, so this needs to be block reference image. This is gonna be one, one, one. Yep, one, 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 good, Thomas. One, 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 good, and that should do it. Uh, we can also zero out the Y position, right? It should work. Why? Why? Why are you down there? Is it that glow? I don't know. I think that's fine. I mean, it, it sucks because we're not seeing, ah, yes, Thomas, that's why. So if we go to our block moving reference, we need to have two materials in there. So that's one thing. Um, so that's the glow going down. That's what that is. Uh, so if we go to our actual platform here, we could actually just take the emission or even better. Nope, that's not it. What's going on here? That's so weird. Why is it down there? I don't really like that emission, to be honest. Let's open up our platform, see what's going on in Blender. Yeah, I don't really love it. And it's causing problems. Sorry, Felipe. I'm sorry, buddy. It looks great, it's just not working for us in the context of the game. So now there's still a problem. He's zero at negative 180. What's this? Does this need to be negative 180? Yes. So his pivot is all screwed up. Okay, so we can keep it. We can keep it, but I need to set the pivot to 180, negative 180. Or the, the rotation to negative 180. Okay, guys, man. So negative 180, that's a little confusing. Let's zero it out. There we go. And then this is gonna be negative 180. Yep. Okay, guys, that should do. That should do it. Now all we gotta do is take this and just snug it over here. And we should have a platform system that works. <clears throat> Let's hit apply. Great. Okay, we have a moving platform system that should, in theory, move around and catch the player, AKA add friction to the player, and also move right up against edges. I kind of want it to play a sound. You want to do that really quick, guys? When I look at games like Doom and they're from the 90s, they're doing that. The, 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 the elevator will go So there's a stop and start sound. So I wonder uh, if we can do that. Okay, so let's go. Let's create a new serialized field, and this is our audio clip. It's going to be an array. It's going to be 
Hmm. Is there a start sound at all? Or is it just stop sound? Yeah, so we can do a start and stop sound. Um, so we can just do start and stop sounds, okay? And then all we gotta do is go to our breakable object here. Actually, let's go to our player controller, there it is. And then we're gonna go to our moving platform here and we're just gonna play the sound right here. So we're, we need to wrap this in some beautiful brackets else if bang bang copy all right so this should play the sound um, there's going to be one so this is going to be game manager dot player controller dot players sfx and it's going to play the sound for our start sound start sound start stop sound zero uh good and look if if i wanted to make it so that both start and stop sound are the same then it's just drag the same sound of both of them. But if it was an elevator going up, we would want a start sound and then a stop sound, right? Actually, that doesn't make sense. It just needs to be a, a, a stop sound. That's all it needs to be. Because the, the start sound is gonna be fired if, if there's a lever, okay? Um, but in this case, this should work just fine. Good, okay, and actually it's gonna be the audio source because it's 3D. So we need a audio source. So it's not gonna play from the player. All right, guys. So we need to name this stop sound. Or it's really just gonna be change direction sound, right? I mean, I don't know what else to say. Uh, <laughs> change direction sound. And then also we need the audio source. And all we gotta do is say, look, if there is an audio source, then play the sound, otherwise don't play the sound, right? And we can create a new function, which is just gonna be private void play sound, play platform sound. I don't want it to be confusing, play platform sound. And then we're just gonna do it like this. Play one shot, change direction sound 1.5, um, and then now all we gotta do is just put it right here. Play elevator, or no, play platform sound. And then right here, play platform sound. Um, the reason we're putting it in a variable is, or in a, in a function is because it's probably gonna get a little bit more complicated, right? Um, so I'm just gonna assume that it will. Um, that it seems, oh yeah, here's an example, right? If audio source exists, right? So that kind of complexity, once you start adding that stuff, you start putting it on two lines and it becomes redundant. You want a hover sound? You want a hover sound? Okay, we can do that. So let's first add a audio source for on the platform itself. <coughs> so that means we're gonna need two audio sources. Um, <coughs> I'm gonna call this one shot audio source and this one looping sound or looping audio <coughs> source. <coughs> so, sorry, I'm coughing guys. Uh, there we go. So we're gonna play the one shot sound through that audio source, which you know, just for clarity, I like to separate out my audio sources. So, actually, you don't even you don't even need to do that. You can have it play through both. But if we want control, we would do two. Let's do two. So this one's going to be the the um, one shot audio source. It's going to have a reverb zone mix. Good. It's going to be three D, right? I'm going to set it to a uh, linear roll off, meaning that. If we're like 30 units away, um, you won't hear it at all, okay? But we're gonna do a logarithmic roll-off. There we go, okay? 
Uh, that's good. Doppler level is one, so we'll set that. Good. And then this one here, same thing. Paste component is new. This is going to be a looping, floating platform sound. Okay. So we're going to go to artlist.io. Let's find us a sound. Um, energy. Loop. I don't want music. I'm low. This one wasn't bad. Low on it. We can download that. I have realized that I, I want less sci-fi and more of a spiritual sound. So ghostly loop, like a woo, right? Yeah, that's it. But it's gonna be a mixture of the three, okay? I'm so hungry. Did you hear that? My belly's growling. By the way, guys, those of you just joining us, just remember you can join full-time game dev. There's probably one coupon code left. One coupon code left. I will not be live streaming, or at least these live streams will not be sponsored by full-time game dev. And these codes won't be available tomorrow or for a couple weeks. So if you want to join the program, there's one code left. Get 50% off. Join 3,000 students worldwide. It really means the world to me, guys, obviously because it supports the game's development, but more importantly, it does support your future. Massive program, 30 plus hours, great reviews, 3,000 students worldwide. It really is a great course, I can honestly say that. Okay, so here we go, we've got these three sounds. I'm gonna bring this one, I'm gonna drop this pitch down pretty low. Oh, I love it. Mix and render. Now watch this, guys. Oh, but Thomas, it's not gonna loop properly. Let me show you how you, how, how we're gonna do that. Um, mix and render, good, drop that down. Then what you do is you just wanna make sure you make the audio, the volumes kind of match, okay? I'm sure there's plugins for this, but I'm good with just doing it this way. Okay. Mix and render, and now let's make it loop, okay? We can delete that track. Uh, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna fade out the end, the tail end. We're gonna grab the front end, go to tracks, add new, stereo, reverse it, and then fade it in, and then pull it to the end. As long as the volumes match, we can merge those tracks together and we've got a perfect loop. Good. I'm going to make it mono because this is ridiculous. Mix down to mono. Tracks. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Make it max. Thomas, don't be stupid. There we go. Tra tracks, mix and render. Between negative 12 and negative 6. Yep, loops perfect. All right, so this is awesome. Is there any other sounds that a an elevator moving would would make? Maybe like a. I'm fine. I'm fine with how it is. Um, I was gonna say like a tingling, like a ding ding ding, ding 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 ding, ding. like it's magical, you know. But I think that's fine. Um, <clears throat> so let's go to our sounds, and we're gonna call this platform float electricity loop. Okay, bring that into Unity. All we gotta do is add it in, guys. Um, so it's gonna be here, platform, electricity loop. Honestly, we don't even need a reference to the looping audio source because 
we're not doing anything with it, but we might want to disable it eventually, like if you blow up the platform or something. Um, so it's fine to keep that. We're gonna have this here, and now we need to change direction sound. You guys ready? I'm thinking of a sound, like a door or a gate shut. That kind of sounds cool. I liked this one. That right there is all we need. Whoa, sorry. And I'm thinking a, a Tibetan bowl. You'll, you'll know it when you hear it. There we go. Just, it's, and I'm gonna increase the pitch of that. I actually really like this one. No. You'll see what I'm gonna do with this in just a sec. We want it to feel slightly spiritual. Uh, we don't want everything to feel sci-fi because the whole point of the game is very religious, right? So I want there to be spiritual tones. That's a good sound. And then that Tibetan sound. Let's increase the pitch. Oh, I love that. And we'll just fade that out towards the end there, okay? Almost there, guys. Yep, export, wave, and we're gonna call this platform float switch direction. All right, just getting a little bit of game feel here, guys. That's all we're doing. <clears throat> just a little bit of game feel. Um, go to the platform here and Actually, yeah, yeah, just right here, switch direction. And then we're gonna use the same audio source sort of thought process here, which is we have a custom roll off with a max distance of 30. That doesn't, no, let's do linear. Where is it? What in the world? That's wrong. Oh, there it is, okay. Um, max distance of 30, that's fine. Algorithmic is good. Um, so let's go ahead and let's jump inside of Unity and take a look. Okay, it's not looping, so that's okay. All we gotta do is go to our uh, looping sound. We're gonna set it to loop. I feel like 30 is a little high, so we're gonna do <coughs> 20. And I feel like we need to have a little bit more like this. Yeah. Okay, uh, that's good. Same with this one, I'm thinking like, you only hear it if you're on it, right? So like 15, there we go. All right, guys, let's take a look. I love that. Okay, I didn't hear a switch sound there for some reason. Okay, let's go up there. Doesn't that sound great, guys? Hey, who was the person, not everybody say yes, who was the person who, who gave that idea? Who was that? The idea of the looping sound. Mechanized war pig, thank you. Oh, I love that. Okay, it's a little loud, right? So we'll, we'll set it to like one. Way too low. Okay, let's drop it down. 
so play one shot, you can actually specify the sound. So we would do something like, um, we do 0.5 F. I mean, that's, it's pretty amazing because it feels great. Um, <laughs> like adding just subtle sounds like that is such a big deal. <clears throat> There's part of me that wonders what else can we do? You know, um, I feel like we should create an elevator system that just takes you up to the top like that. Cause man, if you could do that, it's going to be super fun. Um, where else could we put the, the moving platforms to showcase how, how to do things? I wonder if there's other places we could do. Let's go, let's open up the library. Oh, I have an idea. We could do one right here. So we could have a moving platform right above your head, but it's fine. It's fine. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else I want to do today. Yeah. Yeah. That's about it guys. Just remember that full-time game dev is 50% off. This is a sponsored slot for this live stream because guys, this does support the channel. It supports father's development. It really does. Uh, it allows me to pay my team and pay myself um, and make father. So thank you guys so much. There is one or two coupon codes left. 3000 students worldwide, great reviews. I can honestly say after two years of running this program, this is a great program and I wish I had taken something like this when I started making games so that I could speed up the process of starting my own game studio. You're going to learn 2D and 3D art. You're going to learn how to get six figures in funding from publishers with just a demo. Believe it or not, that's how I do it. I'm on my third time doing this. Um, we're currently doing that. Um, you're going to learn marketing. You're going to learn how to hit the Steam front page, how to reach out to the press, how to get YouTubers to play your game. C Sharp, 2D and 3D Unity development. Um, and also crowdfunding and Kickstarter with some workbooks as well. Private Discord community, so it's a great program, guys. I really can say that, honestly. Um, yeah. Cheers. <laughs> Bye. Get over here. Get down. <coughs> hey, thanks for watching. By the way, if you haven't downloaded that free 2D game kit below, click below, it's my treat to you. I used this game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days and actually got to play it with him in front of his audience, which is really cool. This game kit is totally free. It's my treat to you and you can use it however you want. You can make a commercial game and make a million bucks off this game kit. I don't care. Or you could just use it for a hobby project. It's my treat to you. And by the way, if you haven't clicked like, that would mean a ton to me. Hit subscribe. And also, this is important. Hit that notification bell. Here's why. If you get notified of when I'm live, you can watch me make my next game and let me know in the chat what you think about the game or any ideas you have. And you might just show up, your chat might just show up in the next video that I upload. All right, I'll talk to you later, bye.